Thanks very much, Greg. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the first of the two webinars focusing on the e beef project, which has a one line item focuses on connecting cattle and pastures with technology to inform timely management decisions. The e beef project is a three year project aimed at demonstrating how primary producers in three regions, the Northern Gulf, I'm sorry, Gulf Savannah, Southern Gulf and Desert Channels regions could utilise new and innovative technologies to inform these timely management decisions. Landholders have had the ability to see firsthand how this decision making using the technologies can further affect their grazing land management, adaptability to seasonal conditions and business profitability. As part of the tech trial, which is the third aspect of the EB project, the following tech, which is some of many that producers involved adopted for use on their property throughout these three regions. Avenza Maps app, Movement Tags, Ditech, FarmBot and OptiWay. These technologies will be the focus of this session. And to kick us off, I'm in the DCQ office with John Okaga, who is one of the Desert Channels Group Producer Group members. And we will be covering on the, we will be focusing on the Avenza Maps app. So a little bit of a background about us. I'd like to welcome John Okaga, who, as you can see, his family photo is underneath the mouse on the left-hand side. Good morning, John. Afternoon, John. Thank you. Yeah, um, we're yeah sheep and cattle producers, uh, 160 kilometres southwest of Longreach. Um, yeah, family operation. And um, yeah, we've been sort of doing a little bit of the Avenza stuff with Kate and um, found it pretty useful. Cool, thank you, Jono. So not only am I one of two Desert Channels Central Region EB project officers, I actually also come from a property which is family owned um, southwest of Longreach called Kalula Station um, and you can see my family, the photo of my family underneath the screen, underneath the mouse now. So we have four properties in total covering about 42,000 hectares in to, um, as a total. Um, and we are a meat, sheep and beef producing business. Um, and our family also use Avenza Maps on probably a weekly basis, just for property, infrastructure, planning, location, safety, all that type of stuff. But I'll talk, we'll be talking about more of the benefits of the Avenza Maps app as we go through this session. So just to give you a quick overview, the Avenza Maps app is a mobile phone app, which is not reliant upon mobile phone service. Um, it can be utilized anywhere. With or without reception and as part of the eBay project there was an initial property infrastructure map as you can see on the left underneath my mouse which was created for each of the members of the eBay project so that they could specifically apply the technology to each of their properties so this is an example of the Isla map there was also um, there was also locally relevant maps which are accessible via free download in the Avenza Maps store. Specifically the F SF and the SG maps have been found to be the most relevant and um, yeah you can see the GPS tracking on there as well as the location. So we'll start, we'll kick off. Jono, your thoughts about it all? Um, yeah well we were sort of hoping to achieve before we actually got onto a Benza was to get some advantage um, of being able to map in real time. And with the old GPS systems, you had to sort of pot your points and then make it relevant. You know, you had no background mapping um, on it. We really found this Avenza it was great for the background. Awesome, righto, that's really good. Um, what attracted you to Avenza Maps in the first place, John? Real time mapping. Yep. And the fact that it was mobile phone based, which everybody carries a phone now, um, staff, yeah, workers, um, people, you know, reshooters, 
kids whatever you can give them a, a map that's relevant and it's real time they can track themselves and through the UHF system you can talk to them on the direction and sort of know where they are and you know where they are. Yep, yep. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Um, would you be able to tell us about how you, like about the major benefits that you found whilst adopting the technology using a Benza? I was amazed by its accuracy. Um, so on your S, F and SG maps, the background map and where you are is really good. You know, if you've got to go to the neighbours or you've got to go to a certain area on your place um, with your background map, especially on those locally relevant maps, it's how accurate it was. Um, the major benefit is you don't need phone coverage. Yep. yep. Um, and from a little bit left field type thing is when you've got somebody that is not familiar with what we do, the fact that it's north south relevant, um, you can actually talk to them, and you know they've got no idea where north south is without looking at their phone. But you can actually send them north, south, east, and west because of the mapping ability. Yep, oh, that's awesome. Having said about the benefits, what have you found have been some of the challenges of using it as well? Because nothing's perfect. Um, operator, <laughs> you've got to you've got to be brave enough to push buttons and and work things out. You've got to know, work your way through and find out what maps and what buttons suit you the best. Also, um, there's a crossover between the locally relevant maps that make it, make it so you've got to get your tracking, you've got to stop tracking on one map and track to the other, which is sort of, it's, it's not a great problem. You've just got to remember to do it, otherwise you'll end up with a line out the flap that's not relevant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, Android and iPhone can be a difficulty. Just for some people, I'm an Android user and somebody else an iPhone user, it can, it's a little bit different in the versions. Mm -hmm. And the buttons are also different. quite different as different. well with functionality too, yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who has, who's looking into or who has just purchased a Venza? Um, be brave. Get in there and have a look. Um, you can, we, we use it a little bit, you know, you're looking at the country life and see a place for sale or something like that. You can actually go and work out where it is. Adjustment wise, it's been unreal for us. Um, you can send it, we sent it to a helicopter pilot the other day. Um, and he used to just fly direct to a place um, it was fully um, fully accessible for him yep. um, and we just passed it straight on. Um, I know I did the screenshot method and sent it on with him, not realising that he was already on a Venza, I think, and haven't used it yet, but I'm pretty sure you can actually send the link straight to him. Yeah, you can. You can transfer layers directly to someone else with the same app, absolutely. Um, you've got to create some good habits. Um, pop in the Toyota, your phone's in your pocket, hit the track, no. and it'll follow you around. We used it the other night to, with sort of culling roos, and you could um, pick up where you've been. So you can virtually mop up a paddock, whether it's for mastering or for other purposes. It's accurate enough for what we need. Absolutely. Cool. So how do you think that you might use the Avenza Maps app in the future for your business? Look, I would really like to see us to be able to push the P map onto as a background map. Yep. So your current property veg maps would be unbelievable as a background. Um, the accuracy of them is famous for being inaccurate. Uh, it would be unreal to be able to use the Avenza type, which is you know, pretty accurate to be able to replot and get um, data. I'll get your current data. Um, look, report to council is one we sort of thought of the other day too. You know, you got a grid out here or a washout um, and that sort of thing. I can see it being invaluable for search and rescue. Mm -hmm. And obviously, local fire brigade, if it ever gets enough grass out here to burn. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So you reckon the main point that you thought was just getting everyone on the same page and the same wavelength? Everybody's got a phone. It's a click app. So you click on the app, away you go. Um, you can put a person that's been there for two hours or a person that's been there for 20 years on the same page. 
Mm. Um, the knowledge that you can pass on to somebody is quick. It's real time. You know, you, you know where you are on your place, but you can, you can, you know, say, okay, we'll follow this down there, go north, go left, go left, go right, and and they can understand it because they can look at their phone. Absolutely, no, that's awesome. Right, oh, well, thank you very much, Jono. Back to you, Greg. Thank you, John, for giving us your time today. Um, John has been involved with the eBeef project as part of that of our producer group hub around the Almaden area. John is situated in Mount Malloy and has been trialling the movement GPS ear tags. The movement tags allow you to track your cattle's movement from your phone anytime, anywhere via a 3G network. The tags have been on for a bit over a year now and thank you John, we can see your slides now. Over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Shakira, for the introduction there. Uh, just an opening shot there. We're about 40k north of Mariba. Uh, it's a family property, settled back in 1876, way before my time. I'm 78 next month, but uh, uh, we're the third family on the property, not our own family. There's been several families over the years. That's a click of my daughter, Julia. She's taking an active involvement in the property, and we do use contractors to help us along. There's a shot of the old homestead on the left there. Um, Settled in 1870, in 1876, as I said, and the homestead built in 1878. Uh, right hand shot shows an aerial drone shot of all things. Great little tool, the drone. Won't talk about that too much, but uh, the yards are hidden in there under the uh, under some of those old rain trees and so on. Uh, so that's a bit of background on the property. Um, property. Uh, the second owner was a guy called. Some of you people run Brang, uh, Bra Brahman cattle. We run Brangus. Run a small Brangus study about 80 females. We've used AI, ET, uh, even into IVF uh, in getting some genetics on the ground. Uh, some of the best out of America and certainly some of the best out of Australia. Small stud, got a nice little clientele running. Um, but uh, for some Brahmin people, I'll just spend two seconds on that. This was Brahmin stud number two. A lot of the infrastructure is still here from those days. Lionel DeLandles and um, Ken Atkinson from Wairuna, they were the two boys who started the to start back in 1946. Um, it was called the Zubu um, Society in those days. And uh, I think Ken and um, Morris must have tossed a coin because we became number two and uh, Wairuna, which still runs incidentally, is known as number one. Okay, back onto the uh, product that we're talking about or the, the technology um, uh, movement tags. And um, we use the, the movement products for only uh, not only tags for cattle, for tracking cattle, but also for water tank monitoring. Uh, well, I got into it, it's best management practice, uh, in my opinion, to get be able to track cattle. And um, and then I like to sleep at night time. And so we carry uh, life insurance and property insurance. And uh, this gives me a bit of uh, security as to knowing where key cattle are. And uh, the stimulus was really to, um, to get on top of the job. We lost a very valuable stud Brangus bull I don't know whether it was Taipan or Three Day. We were mustering, brought cattle in, and um, where was uh, where was uh, Top Shelf? And he wasn't home with a, with a mob. Found him, and he paddled. And I, that's, that was sad. That was a real stimulus to get me into it. Um, and then, of course, the benefits flowed from that. Being able to monitor um, uh, heifers, particularly first calf heifers and cows, commercial and F ones and F twos, as well as the stud cattle on um, point of calving. And uh, we can pick up um, uh, grazing patterns and grazing pressure. Um, and the thing that Kira mentioned there a minute ago is you can check stock anytime from anywhere. And um, that's that in itself is quite useful. I jump out of bed some mornings and I've almost become a brand manager. I can actually check if things are happening at the start of the day and then uh, I'm actually pumping water now as it happens. A uh, little tag you see it on the left there, it's um, solar powered. And uh, you're getting any feedback? I hope I'm not getting feedback. I can hear a bit of feedback. Uh, solar solar uh, powered and lithium battery in there. Um, and it's just a matter of popping it in the back of the, you know, pop it in the front like the NILS tag or your property, uh, your cattle management tags, pop it in the back of the ear and it's sun charged. Um, adoption and installation, um, we needed to um, tidy up our farm plan and um, give the paddocks ID numbers, as you'll see in a second, or names. And um, that was a that was a good 
a uh, good stimulus to get us on to tidying up um, the farm plan. And thanks to Gulf Savannah, call out to Carl. Thank you very much for getting us on the, on the track there. All done by email and by remote, setting up the, uh, the farm plan that we put together about 15 years ago. We needed to tidy it up. And um, to get into the adoption stage, we checked the connectivity. Um, we, it is a, currently, it's a phone app, and um, we needed to get that sorted out. We're on Optus here. We've got a pretty ordinary Telstra signal. Um, and we put an antenna up on top of our NBN uh, uh, platform on top of the homestead. Uh, we did have an initial problem um, with tags failing, uh, a lot of water ingression. We've been onto it now since October two years ago. We were one of the first to get onto the product. And um, with that first batch, uh, the little O-ring let, uh, let water ingression. We found out that was a problem and worked very closely with the movement team. Uh, Daniel and Peter and uh, Frank and the crew, and um, once again, remote. Never met any of the boys personally, so we, we're virtually running <laughs> the show, and that, that problem's been overcome, a mechanical problem there. Uh, the connectivity issues, we actually have actually increased the height of our antenna, which is basically just a stick, so like you stick on the front of your bull bar for um, UHF reception, uh, and that worked well. Uh, just on the product being developed along the line there, um, uh, they've now gone to a desktop function, which is really useful. Um, uh, I was a bit dubious about handling that uh, in getting onto the screen that I'm looking at here now as we talk. And um, the, I've got an IT buddy and he, he used TeamViewer and 20 minutes later we're hooked up. He's in Cairns and I'm up at north of Mount Malloy. And so I said, while you're on... Ian, can you hook Kathy up? So my wife, um, Kathleen, uh, she's quite uh, interested in running the show and uh, she can actually um, uh, have it on her screen as well when she's doing her work. There's a photo taken by Kira, uh, Kira Steele, great little lady that she is, and uh, I don't know how she got that shot and it wasn't posed because you can't train cattle. You can train humans but not cattle, but uh, there's a shot of the tags actually mounted um, behind the ears of those Angus cattle there. Uh, I was just going to mention something else. In in actually adopting and getting the installation going, uh, I didn't. I thought I'd give this a bit of a test drive. We got a Honda side by side and um, stuck one on the air filter, and it still works. And um, that I think is an application that the movement people are now looking at. Um, but I reckon every ringer should have one on his hat band, as was touched by Jono there a minute ago, of being able to in real time to track people. Uh, you can um, you can uh, track where that where that uh, Honda's been and um, and uh, in the event of a problem, well, you know you can follow where people are where people are. Here's some shots of the dashboard. A good buzzword using the dashboard. The one on the left shows masonry, one of our bulls. Uh, this is a shot taken um, a couple of days ago, and um, that's where he's located. He's, he's blue. He's a boy, and the um, the pinkies are obviously stud females, all got their numbers and so on there. Uh, so that's uh, that, and if you by touching that big white box at the bottom down here, you can actually click it, and that'll show you where that animal's been. Um, for I don't know if you can see the the arrow there, but there's a black label, another bull, uh, stud Brangus bull, Tilpara Hills, the prefix there on that. He's actually in a national park, <laughs> and uh, so he's naughty, and that, that's just interesting that that photo showing where a bull should be. And um, and there where a bull shouldn't be, which is not the next door neighbour. It's a very big next door neighbour, so Korean National Park. Uh, the shot in the middle just gives you an overview of the uh, the whole setup, um, which is just a, another shot of the previous slide. And then over on the um, on the other uh, on the other uh, slide, there you'll see the water tank uh, monitor. So that's 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 almost a given a, th a freebie thrown in with the uh, cattle tracking. Uh, tracking um, and you can see the tank there 87 uh, percent by double clicking on that white button again you can actually bring up um, the, the last the last 24 hours the last seven days and the last 30 days we've only got one tank hooked up currently um, but that's uh, that's an excess work in progress I'm intending to do another tank that, that services another part of the property we have access to digressing their quick little plug for land care. I guess there's some land care people listening. We actually uh, did the whole boundary of Rifle Creek 
uh, with a land care grant, 50-50 grant, um, about 12, 14 years ago now. The rainforest, we're in a pretty high rainfall area here. Um, we're probably about 1,100 millimetres close to the coast. And uh, so we've got a lot of rainforest uh, regenerated there. And uh, part of the of, uh, riparian fencing, getting off the subject of electronics, uh, we've now got um, uh, reticulated water everywhere for the cattle instead of them sucking out of a, out of a creek. Okay, try and get the next one up. Uh, future advice to any new movement users. Um, uh, there's myself on the left uh, talking to, that's actually Mason Nibble I just mentioned, and the two guys on the right, I give them material if they're watching there from that Toowoomba, the hub down at Toowoomba, which is uh, getting a fair bit of uh, airplay to the Ag Tech and Logistics Innovation Hub down at Toowoomba, and they made a visit here uh, about two months ago, and I see them in the yards having a look at the bull. So uh, future advice to uh, people uh, considering using DAGs, and uh, there's others apart from movement, of course, but we've gone down the movement track, is to um, work with the team, and in our case, the movement team uh, gave us great backup um, when we did have a couple of little gremlins there. Um, check the connectivity uh, uh, and get that sorted out with the farm plan that I mentioned there a minute ago to, um, to uh, uh, just at one part in increasing your, your, your productivity. Using technology as a management tool, uh, I use it, um, as I mentioned, um, probably a couple of times a day. Um, saves time. It enables planning and efficiency of moving stock. And there's that uh, security and peace of mind I mentioned there a minute ago. Um, there is a muster function um, that you can actually, uh, if you're doing your muster and you're sending choppers out and people on um, horseback or quads or whatever, or hopefully side by sides these days, uh, you can actually contact uh, movement and they'll, they'll give you a, uh, a blast and you can pick up uh, using the bulls as a Judas. Um, where the, where the bulls are, usually the cows are, or vice versa. And uh, so uh, that muster function's coming in, uh, in uh, that's available as we talk. Um, uh, the, we use the phone app uh, ourselves. We, I've tested it from uh, you know, Brisbane and other places, or well away from the property. It works uh, any time um, in real time, and you can check your stock and your water. We're actually going away with Kira and Johnny McLaughlin listening in on the Magical Mystery Bus Tour an EB bus tour next week and I've got a, an old mate of mine looking after the place while we're away and uh, I'll be keeping an eye on um, the, the, the water level in the tank uh, because we're articulated and um, also uh, the, the, the cattle, if there's any hassles, he knows who to ring uh, in the case of the young guy that works for us, uh, the cattle guy, and uh, uh, he knows where to turn the bore on to fill the tank up. So uh, there are some other apps coming. I mentioned there um, about the desktop uh, coming through uh, from movement. They've kept me in the loop on that, and we've now got that on on the on the uh, piece on the PCs, both my wife and myself. The water monitoring function, and I think they're talking about a remote rainfall function as well, uh, which is probably a bit of a bit of a leak, a bit of a, a leak out uh, for people. And um, I think um, if if we could link all this up um, together on properties. In the headwaters, so we're on the headwaters of the, of the mighty Mitchell River. In fact, um, Rifle Creek's on one boundary, and uh, Spear Creek, aptly named, on the other, on the southern boundary of the property. Um, if we could link up some of this, some of this technology that we're using day to day into the bigger picture, that might help some of our cousins in uh, Gympie and um, Maryborough, Brisbane, and the northern rivers of New South Wales. So uh, that's a bit of a run through on, on movement. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, we use it as a tool. Got a granddaughter doing vet down at uh, Charles Sturt at Wagga. She's got the app on her phone. She had a couple of stud heifers here on the place so she can keep a track on those. Uh, big call out and thank you to the um, e-beef team the, in our patch here, Kira, Emily, John and Mandy and others behind the scenes. A great job, well done and thank you very much for the opportunity of playing with you. Thanks, Greg. Um, I just wanted to welcome everyone as well and thanks for taking the time to jump online and have a listen to our producers and their experiences with the technology adoption. Uh, next up, we have Tom and Christine Saunders from Whitewater. Tom and Christine have been involved with the eBeef project for the three years and have recently installed the direct injection system. Uh, this system delivers nutritional supplements like urea and phosphorus directly into the water that the cattle drink. 
Thank you, Tom and Christine. We can see your slides now. Over to you. Yeah, thank you, Kara. Welcome all. My name is Tom and I'm here with my wife, Christine. I'll start off with a quick overview of Whitewater. We are a family-run breeding property running Brahman Cross Drought Master Herd. Our main market is uh, 300 kilo steer heifers suitable for local or export market and then a few butcher slaughter products. We are located in the Ethridge Shire region, 28 kilometres from the township of Mount Surprise. Average rainfall is 750 mil. We have a mixture of soil types, main being rich red, vol uh, red basalt with granite and black soil, covering an area of approximately 25,000 hectares. Our current stocking rate of beef cattle is one to six hectares. If Christy and I had initially thought about direct injection water supplement technology and have watched the process for years. And in the early years, there was a quite a few issues. So we decided it wasn't for us at that time. When we were invited to a presentation with the eBeef project showcasing DTEC, I logged in to have a look and realised that the system had improved from the early days and sensors had now been fitted to avoid the issues from the early versions. We then decided that now was the time to throw a hat in the ring and as we have been looking for a better delivery system for our cattle, whereby we had control of more uniform consumption of our urea-based lick in the dry and we feed lick our cattle all year. We contacted the DTEC and set the wheels in motion. We had a meeting with Tom Fez and Naomi Civil from DTEC and they supplied the information and costs involved. They collected water samples from the electric wall we had nominated to trial the system on. The decision was made that we would use our Ranga paddock with an area of 2,000 hectares as we have good control of the man-made waters and very little access to surface water. This paddock has about 18 kilometres of blue line poly pipe, eight troughs and two 10,000 gallon storage tanks. We use farm bot water monitoring system for the tank levels and pumping time from our electric bore. Therefore, the whole of the 18 kilometre tanks, tanks and troughs hold the product at any one time. However, we still had our reservations and commenced the trial of Upro Orange Liquid Urea on 18 head of dry heifers initially for a period of four to six weeks, starting in July, starting at a lower rate and then increased to the level required. We were happy with the results and the remaining dry heifers being a total of 382 were in the paddock by August. We changed over to the UPRO Green Liquid Phosphorus base product in December as we had received 150 mils of rain and the heifers were starting to drop calves. However, from August to November, we had numerous issues with the pressure causing the polyline to blow out. We had to adjust our, the pressure by using another tank. The direct injection system water meter failed for a period and was underdosing. Therefore, a sensor is now installed on the system for under de delivery of product and a new water meter installed. Although we had these issues, the cattle maintained their body school condition dry visually. During this period, Dietech staff work with us to iron out these issues in a timely manner. We, we can confidently recommend the U, UPRO Orange liquid for the dry cattle. However, we cannot comment on lactating cows using the UPRO Orange at this stage as we haven't had them in, in it for long enough. The dashboard is easy to use. We can confidently know how much medicated water is being consumed on a daily basis as the direct injection system coupled with the farm bot water monitoring allows us to access this data and notifications of leaks, blowouts are sent directly to our computer and phones in real time through satellite from the cloud-based system. The data collected for the UPO Green has been encouraging and since the 16th of December, the condition of the lactating heifers and calves and dry cattle are visually pleasing for this time of the year. However, we will be mustering these cattle in early April to wean, practicing the empty heifers 
I guess we'll wait and see for the results. We now have the technology to control the consumption, intakes of supplement for the cattle in the trial. We have saved time, labour and wear and tear on the plant and equipment compared to our current dry lick options of 100 kilo blocks and wet season loose lick on the remainder of the herd. We had utilised the infrastructure we already had in place. This capitalised on the cost to have the system. Therefore, in the future, uptake of adding more units, we have our concerns about the costs. These are options we will face in the future. But in conclusion, it is still too early to confidently comment on the system. We need at least a whole year or more of running the system to compile the accurate data. We are being we're big on measuring the changes on investment and we make within our business. This enables us to make informed management decisions. The possibilities are out there. We'd like to sh show you a quick video of the cattle um, yeah, that are using the direct injection system. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Gulf Savannah, NRM and DAF team, DTEC and the eBeef producers for the collaboration of like-minded people all working towards a new future for the northern beef industry. Next we have Shelley and Kevin from Uralat Station. Shelley and Kev have been trialling the FarmBot remote tank, tank monitors through the eBeef project. They installed three monitors in December of 2020. Um, thank you, Kevin and Shell, for giving up your time today to talk to us. We can now see your slides. Over to you. Thanks, Kira. Good afternoon. Uh, we are Kevin and Shelley Taylor, and we own a relaxed station, which we bought in 2017. We are situated between Mount Surprise and Georgetown on the Isley River. Uralat is 1,400 hectares, and we run about 1,500 head of Drought Master and Brahmin cattle. Why FarmBot? Well, we just completed the installation of three new bores, about 27k of polyline and 15 watering points. So we knew that there'd be a lot more work involved in checking waters and troughs, and therefore we needed some form of remote water checking technology to make this job a bit easier. Through eBeef, we made some inquiries with FarmBot and decided that this system would be best suited to us as it sent data in real time. As we have so many cattle dependent on these watering points, we wanted to know as soon as possible if there was a problem. There's also some old bores here that had issues and we were doing daily runs out to those tanks to check waters too. So we wanted to know what was going on with those. The adoption was pretty easy. We purchased three farm bot water monitoring devices for our main tanks. Initial setup to the tanks was easy following the installation instructions. And then we called FarmBot and they set up the satellite connection and helped us to download the app and set up the perimeters of the tank and at what levels we would like to be alerted if there was a problem. We receive alerts in the form of a text message and email if the water tank level is below or above the specification. We have it on three different mobiles and any one of us can check the app at any time, anywhere in mobile or Wi-Fi service to get water levels and graphs in real time. This technology has been invaluable to our business as it has alerted us of a problem several times and saved valuable man hours and water loss. Not only does it give you the percentage of the volume in the tank when you log onto the app, it also gives you a graph of the trend of the water level daily. Being solar bores, you can see the water level drop as the cattle drink and rise as the bore replenishes the tank. Large unusual drops in the graph during the night has alerted us as to water leaks as you learn the trend of each bore. 
water not keeping up to the tank during the day has alerted us to this uh, being an actual problem with the bore itself. Reading and learning the trend of each bore has helped us identify problems immediately. Future advice, well, we're extremely happy with our farm bot systems and the peace of mind that gives us. Checking waters is so much easier and cost effective and this technology has helped us to make timely management decisions. Our advice to using this product would be don't just rely on the alerts to indicate there's a problem. There might be a slight leak overnight and the graph will indicate that the water has dropped significantly in the tank, but not enough to send you a specified alert. If, and if it's a good bore, it'll fill the tank again during the day. You'll only to lose that water again overnight. Check your app daily, about the same time. We do it first thing in the morning uh, to learn your water trend for each, each monitor. It's a great asset to assist us with remote water monitoring, but it doesn't replace water runs altogether. Thank you for your time and thanks to the eBeef team for all your support. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, my husband Jack couldn't be here today, but thank you very much for having us on to talk about the OptiWay. Um, Jack and I run a cattle production business and we use the OptiWay technology on Dunluce Station near Hewitt. We bought it and, and put it on here in 2020. Dunluce is 135,000 acres of undulating Mitchell grass downs, and on average we get about 140 mils rain, of rain each year. The property is largely used for backgrounding cattle and as part of the business as a whole, um, we really put a lot of emphasis on measuring weight gains and um, that's really a critical aspect of managing our cattle and making business decisions. So for anyone that isn't familiar with the OptiWay technology, there's a little video here. It's a mobile trailer that can be used to weigh cattle pretty much. The only infrastructure you really need for it is a tow ball on a vehicle. And so in this little trailer, a lick or a bait is used in the in the front of it, which entices animals to place their two front feet onto the device. And the animal's nils tag is then scanned at the same time for identification. And the weight is taken, which calibrates to the whole animal weight, which has really great accuracy. The company that creates these machines is owned by a fellow called Bill Mitchell. He's based in Mountain Valley. He found that a lot more animals were actually willing to stand on the device if it was only two front feet that were needed. Uh, so that's why the whole animal doesn't walk onto it. The, the OptiWay unit then frequently submits data uh, through that NILS tag and, um, and it, it also submits the weight via satellite to a cloud-based dashboard that will work on any device, whether it's your phone, tablet, personal computer, doesn't matter whether it's Apple or Microsoft, it, um, it should be able to transmit information to it. And the dashboard can then be used to analyse data and make informed decisions about weight gains and the mob as a whole. Thanks, Jane. I think you've got an idea of what it looks like. Uh, so why did we implement the OptiWay? We started looking for a product like this because we wanted to a measure, a, a, a way to measure weight gain in the paddock without the hassle of setting up walkover way scales into different watering points in different paddocks. So we rotate our paddocks really quickly during the wet season and although slower, we still do a lot of cattle moves during the non-growing season. Therefore, pulling down panels and moving bulky scales every few days to us. We also really wanted flexibility uh, of being able to put something into a like where we're trialling legumes or different plantations and get really quick objective data about what our average daily gains were uh, in those situations. What we're Next slide, please, Jen. So um, Jack puts a lot of particular emphasis on measuring within our business. The OptiWay, OptiWay also allows us to, to forecast, to budget and to organise our yearly calendar a, a lot more effectively. We used to do a lot of measuring of average daily weight gains by bringing cattle all the way into the yards and weighing the mo mob as a whole or a portion of the mob at least. But of course that has a lot of time and labour implications. So we still do weigh through the yards on occasion but we've found that the OptiWay is 
really very accurate. It's sort of within 2%. It, it gives a really good indication of what's truly going on without, that, without the hassle of bringing that mob as an entirety into the yards each time we want a snapshot of, of their weight gains and, and where they're at in terms of marketability. The OptiWay, it, it allows us flexibility for analysis of that mob without tying up staff and, um, and time, I guess. Um, next slide, please, Jane. So just coming into the adoption side of things, before adopting OptiWay, the main challenge that we faced was about forecasting our sale mobs. We really had to um, work out a way to accurately sell mobs of cattle without under or over booking trucks or sales space in a feedlot or a boat. And sometimes we would overestimate the weight of a mob and end up committed to selling cattle that were lighter and therefore hadn't achieved the margin we were aiming for. So now the OptiWay really allows us to book the decks confidently and sell only the weight range that we want to. And when we were deciding whether we would implement it or not, we did a cost analysis of how many mandates we were currently using to weigh and measure cattle uh, versus the cost of buying the product. And we allowed a much wider margin of error for the average daily weight gain than what has actually been achieved here at Dunloose. The, the product we have found has already well and truly paid for itself within our business. But the OptiWay is mainly used on dry cattle here. We have played around with measuring cow-calf units and Bill has made some changes to the technology to help increase the accuracy there. Uh, but mainly it's used on, on either heifers or steers. But other places we've used it are, are in, apart from the trade, steers and heifers, we've used it on recently weaned calves, growing bulls, in cow-calf units and, as I mentioned before, on different pasture types. Thanks, Jane. Next slide, please. So just coming back to the, the value of the OptiWay to us, uh, we found that the OptiWay is really, really valuable within uh, the, the Dunloose backgrounding enterprise. We've saved a lot of hours of mustering and walking cattle to the yards to get the same information um, that the OptiWay is providing us. So, um, you know, in terms of any challenges, we really haven't had many. Jack generally assesses the dashboard and he's found it really use, really user friendly and very easy to comprehend from the get go. Uh, OptiWay has really good customer service, uh, Bill's always on the other end of the phone and really responsive. Um, perhaps our only issues have been playing around with different baits, like the blocks or the licks, to get cattle to walk on at different times of the year. And really that's just trial and error depending on what class of cattle we're looking at, what the country type is. It'll be different for everyone. Um, what we have found here in particular is that good salt blocks in, blocks in the are really great and a horse or a molasses type block once the grass starts to reduce in digestibility is a good option. It just depends what the cattle are lacking or the chasing at that time. Uh, next slide, please, Jane. So advice for others. Uh, our advice really would be just to spend time on the dashboard, uh, getting comfortable with it, be brave, and reach out for help if you are experiencing difficulty. Good communication with the, the manufacturer, I think, is really key, key in improving this technology over time. Uh, our next piece of advice would relate to not panicking if only a small proportion of the animals seem to be using this. So we use this in paddocks where we might have four different watering points. We might just have it set up on one water and we might have 5% of the mob step onto it. Uh, it, it. Regardless of that, it does seem to be really accurate as a snapshot across the herd as a whole in giving us our, our weight data. Um, it, it's allowed us to make really timely management decisions regarding, regarding everything, marketing, paddock utilisation and the use of the um, nutritional supplementation as well. In the future, I think there's a huge potential for the OptiWay technology, particularly as things like the genomics um, technology improves and, and uptake is increased, better information on which genetic lines of both homebred cattle or, or bought cattle are more productive in terms of average daily weight gains will be really beneficial. That always has to be balanced out with other practicalities like fertility, temperament, adaptation, 
there's, there's other factors to consider, but basically it, it gives us the, uh, the ability to identify really productive lines. And we can balance our productivity data with identifying those lines of adapted cattle and then, you know, either we look at breeding from them or um, going to those particular vendors to buy cattle and background those ones that are more productive. And that potentially adds value right through from beyond us and all the way to our buyers and essentially the consumers at the end. Jane, next slide, please, if that's okay. I just wanted to really thank uh, Southern Gulf, OptiWay and the eBeef scheme for the opportunity to incorporate this really great technology into our business and for the opportunity to present today. Thank you.